The S in the solid principle stands for the single responsibility principle. This principle is a very good advice on how to build systems. By specifying that each class has only one responsibility and a single reason to change. Today I'm going to show you how to apply and break the single responsibility principle in .NET. So let's jump into the code. Let's suppose you want to build an accounting system where you can generate invoices. So you can start by creating a new class called an invoice. So this is an invoice class. And for the invoice, you will have some, some properties. Let's say we have private read only string invoice ID. And you can have also the invoice date. And to generate that in the constructor, we can inject invoice ID. Wait, this is not a string. This is date time. Date time, invoice date. And yeah. So you have an invoice. You want now to actually add some invoice items to it. What you can do is create public record. We can add a record invoice item where we can have a title and a price. Basically, each line in the invoice contain a price for that amount. We can add more fields like quantity and such, but there is no need. Once you have an invoice, you need to have a list of invoice items inside of it. So what you can do is you can create a list of invoice item, invoice items, and let's initialize it as an empty list. One of the functionality of the invoice is to add an item. So you can have public void add item where you can have an item, basically invoice item, item, invoice item, item. And you simply invoice items dot add item. Another implementation is to remove an item. So what you can do is void remove item, also an invoice item item, where invoice item, why invoice date? invoice items dot remove and you give it the item. This is very simple and easy implementation for an invoice, but you got the idea. And then you start to think, okay, I created the invoice. I need to, to actually see the output. So what you can do is you can override the two string method and yeah, let's Let's return. Basically, we can create a string builder. Well, new. Where we can append line invoice with invoice ID. And then we can loop for each the invoice items and we can append line as p dot append line. We can say items and we append line the item. Mm -hmm. Item dot title dollar sign item dot price. We can do some kind of formatting or whatever. It's fine. And then we need to return sp.toString. And now we can go ahead and create an invoice. So var invoice equal new invoice. <laughs> an invoice needs an ID, invoice ID, let's say 001, new, date time 2000, 02, 05. Now, if you want to add an item, you can say invoice.addItem. We can add 
let's say I'm I'm buying some computer accessories, I can add new invoice item. So a uh, keyboard price twenty dollars. I can have another item. Where is it? Like monitor, and it is like three hundred dollars. And then I can right line. Invoice. And now if we run the program, we can get the invoice ID and the list of items. Perfect. And now your system is doing very well and you need to start expanding your code base. So one of the functionality you need to add is basically printing that invoice or maybe sending it by email. One possible solution is you start you start adding some functionality to the existing invoice class. Let's say public void save to file. Let's say you need to save it to a file, string file name, and you do something like file dot write all text file name and uh, to string. You can do that. To actually test that, we can, after creating our invoice, we can simply do invoice.save to file and we can pass the file name. If we run the program, we should succeed it. And if we check our file, we should found it in the debug folder. So this is our invoice. But you are breaking here our single responsibility principle because saving to a file or maybe loading from file, you can have another functionality here where it is public invoice load from file. You pass in the file name and it's responsible of getting the file and parse it and return, return the invoice. You can have that, this can be like a static one, but this is not the responsibility of the invoice. It's a responsibility of a different class. So here we are breaking single responsibility principle and another, another example of breaking it is sending an email. Like if you want to send the invoice by email to the client, it's not something for the invoice, but if you add it here, you are breaking it. So how to fix it? We can create a new class called persistence manager. And this class is responsible of saving and loading from file. So you can do something like public void save to file. And you specify the first, you need to pass the invoice instance invoice and you can pass the file name where you can do a very similar thing from what we did in the invoice class is basically file dot write all text you pass it the file name and the invoice dot to string you can do that it's a very similar thing and we can replace our invoice.save to file method with an actual implementation of var persistence manager persistence equal new persistence manager and you can do something like save to file invoice and invoice 001 srp save dot txt and if we run the program we should succeed and if we go to the file system we should have another file SRP, SRP safe. And this is basically applying the single responsibility principle. So in summary, single responsibility principle will tell you that a class should have only one responsibility and you only need to have one reason to change that. If you want to know more about the dry principle, click here somewhere and we'll catch you in the next one.